We are now joined by television host and New York Times best-selling author Jonathan Scott to discuss how advances in solar technology are creating better, smarter homes. Welcome, Jonathan, in a guest capacity after your hosting. Thank you. Duty. This has been an all-night affair, but I love it. This, I mean, the, I could talk for 48 hours nonstop about renewable energy. So thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So you are the star, of course, of the HGTV series Property Brothers, along with your brother, Drew. Um, but you're also an advocate for environmental responsi responsibility. I'm curious to know where that passion initially arose. Uh, I, it, it came from right back being a kid. We grew up on, on a farm and, and, you know, when you're working the ranch and you're, you know, living off the land and you're caring for the animals and you're surrounded by nature, I think it becomes ingrained in you. Uh, and it's the same with a lot of other people I talk to, too, that come from a, a rural setting. You really learn to respect the environment, you really res respect the land around you. And so it's a, a travesty to me when it, you know we see pollution and the effects it has on health and everything else. So at a young age, you know, my brothers and I were little nerds. And so we would <laughs> research, well, we could see pollution, we could see what it was happening, what it was doing to people's health. Uh, and we would get in and we would research by reading books. This is before the internet. And, uh, and that's sort of where it all started for me as a kid. Excellent. You are a fan of clean energy and you've now really a strong supporter of solar. Uh, Vice President Gore mentioned that uh, Italy was a prime geography for solar, where you live, Nevada is similarly so. Yeah. Again, why solar? Uh, solar was a big thing. I mean, even going back uh, 15 years ago, I converted my home to wind energy, um, and you paid more for it at that time, but it was, uh, I felt I was doing the right thing. Um, and then living in Nevada, I, it was a no-brainer that we have so much sunlight. All, like, we're one of the highest sun states uh, in the country. And so I was doing a renovation on my home, and as soon as I completed the renovation, I converted everything over to solar. I was actually producing so much solar energy that I completely offset all of the power on, on my home. And uh, it was shortly after that that the uh, solar market in Vegas just sort of crashed. I mean, the legislation had changed, uh, and it was unfortunate that misinformation was being pumped to the, the consumer, uh, and it really became almost ineffective for people to install solar, and that's why I became an advocate for it, oh. because the, the whole reason they stifled innovation was because of uh, fossil fuel and, and, and the way they're currently producing energy, and it is not sustainable. Briefly tell those who aren't as familiar with what happened with the Nevada legislation a bit, a bit more about that. Yeah, so a lot of people were investing in solar and they were spending you know, tens of thousands of dollars to install their own panels, but one of the biggest concerns people had that was that they couldn't afford that upfront cost. So companies found a solution. There are a lot of companies out there that would um, offset that cost. They'll handle the cost of installation, they'll handle the maintenance, but you have to sign a 20-year agreement with them that you'll purchase your renewable energy from them, your solar. And so it was a great solution and it just skyrocketed. Solar installation was going nuts. But then, uh, unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of politics behind the scenes, and the uh, utilities had convinced the government to implement, uh, one, that you couldn't sell your energy back to the grid. Um, they weren't planning on grandfathering in the existing people who had already install, in, installed solar. Uh, and two, it was going to be more expensive to purchase solar, which pretty much priced the solar companies out of the market. They were no longer able to sell that energy back to, to the grid. So um, all of the solar companies, the big solar companies, packed up and left Nevada, and, and we are... That's where we are right now. All of the big solar companies have closed down in Nevada until, and there's a movement happening, until yeah. enough people say, hey, this is wrong. Why, why are we producing energy in, in a dirty fashion when we have so much sun, we could be producing clean energy for the same cost, actually for, for cheaper. So pulling kind of out of Nevada, looking to America and indeed the world, what are the main reasons that people should invest in solar, especially in the residential format? I, I think it's responsibility. And, you know, the unfortunate thing, so what I do is I, I build homes, I renovate homes, and, you know, when you're doing improvements on your own home, you have to work with your neighbors and make sure that everybody gets along. Well, when you look at, uh, uh, on a global level with climate change, it's, it's, your neighbors affecting your health, your neighbors affecting everything that you do. So that's why this isn't just a, an issue that has to be resolved in America or in North America. It's global. If we don't 
have an action and we don't actually start moving toward um, you know, clean, renewable energy, um, stop pumping all the toxins in the environment that are affecting and, and causing the climate crisis, uh, even one nation who doesn't abide by some of the goals that were set out in Paris can affect the health of everybody globally. So that's why it really is a conversation that everybody has to have together. And events like this, I think, are what really motivate people to say, you know what, I didn't think that just my voice could do anything. But we've heard from lead climate leaders all over the country, all over the world, actually, who th have all started with their community and started being an advocate in their community. And it's like a virus; it spreads, and everybody can get involved. How would you debunk some myths or perhaps allay some fears for people considering solar, but they might think it looks bulky, it's unsightly, or it's too expensive? Oh, no, solar. Let me just tell you right now, solar is sexy. When it, everything has changed in, in the world, when people used to think, oh, solar, it's bulky, it's ugly, uh, not the case anymore. People are driving by houses and seeing that they're powered by solar and saying, I love that. I love that and I want to do that. So now that we have companies like uh, SolarCity and Sunrun and all of these big companies who are offsetting that upfront cost and the maintenance cost, that's no longer the problem. So really the only question you have to ask yourself is, do you have commitment issues? Are you willing to commit yourself to a 20-year plan to say that I will buy clean energy for 20 years because that's, you know, if you're not going to pay the upfront cost, you have to sign a, an agreement to do that. Or it's not even just the production of the energy, it's reducing your consumption of energy. Every single house I buy, every client that we buy a house for, the first thing we do is we walk through that house and we do an assessment of the situation. We change all of the light bulbs to uh, either LED or compact fluorescence. We change um, the fixtures to low flow. Um, you know, the cost of all of these technologies is plummeting constantly. So it's, it, there's a balance and that shift, which I talked about in some of the other hours, that shift will get to a point where nobody can deny that it's good business, it's creating jobs, and at the end of the day, it's saving us a massive amount of money because we're no longer going to have the health, pro health problems associated with polluting our environment. That's right, it's all circular. I do want to talk a little bit more about technology now. It's being incorporated in all aspects of our lives. I'm sure as a builder and designer of homes, you see it being incorporated into the home, smart homes. How do you think about technology when you're designing a home and how can solar energy incorporate or support those technologies? Ooh, I thought that was water. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's, I am the biggest nerd. So we attend all of the conferences on the emerging technologies in the home space. And the biggest and most exciting advances in in my opinion, and all of technology at these, these shows um, surround the home space. You know, people, they're finding smarter ways to control their homes, um, thermostats that will automatically reduce your, your uh, temperature in the home when, it, you know, there's less need, maybe at night. Um, even technologies like you can get solar glazing on your windows, and this is coming down the line, that instead of windows always being where the majority of your heat loss is in a home, now you can have solar glazing where it will actually heat the glass and reduce that heat loss just using the power of the sun. So everything from, from completely controlling the home, uh, home automation, securing the home, making homes more efficient. The building envelope of a home today is so much more efficient than it was in the past, and it's constantly getting better. So uh, that's why I go to these conferences, because I have my you know, shows, my few shows that we do, and, and that's a way for me to reach an audience and educate an audience on what they could do. Um, but I realize as well that a lot of people do not have the budgets to completely overhaul their home and do a geothermal system to heat their home and all of these things. You don't have to do that. You don't have to take out a second mortgage to be uh, environmentally responsible. There are very small things like changing light bulbs, reduce, reducing consumption, and even things like your waste, you know, recycling and doing all of these things, and it'll get you small baby steps forward, and believe me, it gets addictive. When people start doing these little things and they really see that they're making a difference, especially children, when children see the parents doing all of these little changes, they become mini advocates, and they will be the mini property brothers running around the house trying to think of things that they can do. Now there's a thought, Jonathan. Yeah. Thank you so much for all that information.